Hello there and welcome to Friendship Alliance Church. My name is Jason, I'm the pastor here. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter nine. That's where we're gonna start today. It's not where we're gonna finish. We're gonna finish in the book of John, but uh, we're gonna start in Matthew chapter nine and we have kicked off 2024 uh, talking about simplicity. That, that was the word that kept coming up in my heart and in my mind as I was getting ready, as we were all getting ready to enter into a new year, simplicity. And apparently I wasn't the only pastor who had simplicity on their mind. I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, pastor Craig Rochelle of Life Church is also talking about simplicity, looking at it from a different angle. Uh, he's doing a series titled uh, Habits of a Healthy Heart. And so I always love what Pastor Craig has to say. I haven't listened to that one yet, but uh, I always recommend them. So uh, if you're looking for some more, a different angle on simplicity, be sure to check out Pastor Craig Rochelle at Life Church. But simplicity sounds nice, doesn't it? <laughs> like just this, that idea of simple, oh, it sounds so nice because the world is a complicated place, isn't it? Our our jobs are complicated at times, our, our minds can be complicated, our relationships and families, they can be complicated at times, and I just find myself just wanting some simplicity. And so that's what we're doing. That's, what, that's how we've started 2024, is we're taking a simple approach. And specifically what we've been doing is looking at simple topics, simple areas, and how Jesus approached them in a radically simple way. That's what we've looked at. And we, up until this point, we've looked at compassion. We've looked at Jesus's radical approach to the simple topic of compassion and who he extended compassion to. Uh, last week, we looked at the simple area of boundaries and how Jesus approached boundaries in a radical way. His mission and, and what he had to share was of utmost importance, but he often withdrew to lonely places, to get away from the crowds, to, to pray, to rest, to grieve, and to mourn, to express emotion. So even though his mission was of utmost importance, he still had boundaries established and maintained them throughout his ministry. So we looked at that last week. And our theme for today is the simple act of hanging out. <laughs> you can't get more simple than that. The simple act of hanging out. And, and it's just a pet peeve of mine. I refuse to word, use the word fellowship. There's nothing wrong with the word fellowship. I just don't like the word. You don't see people hanging out here saying, like outside of the church saying, hey, we should go, we should go fellowship at the tap room or whatever. We're, we're hanging out. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look at Jesus's radically simple approach to hanging out. And so let's go ahead and look in Matthew chapter uh, chapter 9, verses 10 through 13. It says this, while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with, his, with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Ooh, gross, right? And then in verse 12 on hearing this, Jesus said, look, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So before we look at these verses in depth, would you join me in a word of prayer? Father, we thank you for this time. And I pray that you would take a, a simple topic like hanging out and help us to apply it in a radical way, just like you have. And I pray that once again, we would always look at your life as a blueprint and how we can live out our faith to those around us. And uh, I just thank you for the opportunities that you give us every day to live out our faith. And we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor for that. Uh, speak into hearts and lives today. We thank you so much once again. And all God's people said, Amen. So before we look at Jesus's radically simple approach here, I want to look first at Matthew with you. I want to look at first at Matthew because it's Matthew's house here. Ma Matthew is hosting this shindig with sinners and tax collectors. He's the one inviting them into his home. Like why? Why is he doing that? Because Matthew was also a former tax collector and his life has been changed by Jesus and now he is a disciple 
of his. You would think that now, Matthew being who he is, he would want to distance himself from them now. I don't want to be associated with them anymore. But he welcomes them into his home because he wants others to receive and experience this amazing grace and new life that he has received in Jesus Christ. That's why he's letting tax collectors and sinners into his home. It's like him saying, look, if I, a former tax collector, can have a new life in Christ, then, then my former colleagues can as well. For, for Matthew's change of course in life, he, he, just, he didn't want to contain it to himself. He's like saying, look, come to my place. Sit down with the person who has changed my life forever in Jesus Christ. I just come and experience, see for yourself, listen for yourself. So, so just a little history lesson here for you. Tax collectors during this time were looked at as the lowest of the low in Jewish society. Like the tax collectors, they were, during this time, there were mostly Jewish people that were working for the oppressive Roman government. And so, and also on top of that, they were well known, these tax collectors, they were well known for, for overcharging their own people, the Jewish people, and also skimming off the top to fatten their wallets. So not only were they seen as traitors working for the Roman government, but the also they were crooks as well. They were stealing from their own people. So that's why you often see, you read sinners and tax collectors lumped together in scripture because they were the lowest of the low in society. So when you think about it, was it in Matthew's best interest with regards to his reputation to have sinners and tax collectors over to his house? Probably not, right? It doesn't make sense. Probably not. But what mattered most to Matthew was not his reputation or what others would think uh, of him by having them over. Otherwise, he wouldn't have, if he cared about that, he wouldn't have let them set foot into his home. What mattered most to Matthew was the opportunity for people and others to experience Jesus Christ plain and simple. So, so with that in mind, let's look at Jesus now. Let's look at Jesus and his radically simple approach to hanging out. First of all, just like Matthew, Jesus is not concerned with his reputation. With, if he were, he wouldn't have been hanging out with sinners and tax collectors. You don't see Jesus saying, oh man, what if the people see me with them, right? Oh, with the, the, the sinners and the tax collectors. Like, what will they think? Like, I'm Jesus. I have a... I have a reputation to uphold. You don't see Jesus doing that, do you? Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus came to, to do the will of the Father who sent him. And nothing, and I mean nothing, was going to get in the way of that, right? Right? to achieve his purpose, he was going to hang out with people regardless of their social status, regardless of their place of origin. Think of the Samaritans. Regardless of their gender, think of the Samaritan woman, right? And regardless of their reputation, it, 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 he was going to do it regardless of what it did to his reputation because he is going to achieve his purpose no matter what. And that's why he says, look, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. And we see that the physically sick need healed. And we see throughout the Gospels, Jesus heal time and time again in a number of different ways. I, that's one of my favorite things about Jesus healing individuals. It, it, it's, he did it in a number of different ways. He wasn't limited in how he healed, whether it be someone touching the, the, the hem of his garment to spitting in the dirt to heal, right? Uh, he, he wasn't limited on how he healed. And likewise, the, the sinner needs forgiveness and grace that only Jesus can provide so that he can heal them. Amen? And the Pharisees, the, the religious leaders during this time did not see Jesus in such a way. They did not see him in such a way. And the biggest reason why is because the Pharisees, the religious leaders, 
they thought they were healthier than what they really were, right? They, they thought they were real healthy. We're, we're the upholders of spiritual law. We are the righteous ones. We are the religious leaders. We would not consider hanging out with them. We have this outward appearance of righteousness to uphold, right? Like they simply did not understand or believe in Jesus or his mission that, uh, and why he would hang out with such people. And then we see Jesus, he, he then quotes, he uses a quote from the Old Testament, from the prophet Hosea, when he says, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. That's a direct quote from Hosea chapter 6, verse 6. And Jesus' reasoning for quoting Hosea here was to convey to the Pharisees that God is more interested in a person's heart dedicated to him than the observance of external rituals or traditions or just the outward appearance of righteousness. He's more concerned about a heart that is dedicated to him. His response was, was challenging the Pharisees to look at their own heart. Are you really that healthy? Are you as healthy as you think you are? And it was challenging them on how to view sinners and tax collectors who need a transformed heart, not just a bunch of rules and traditions to follow, to, to try to uphold, to give the appearance of righteousness. And this is a great challenge for you and I as well to examine our own hearts, right? This is a great challenge for you and I to look at how we see the world. Are we looking at them? And you can fill in the blank of whatever them is on your mind right now. Are you looking at them through the eyes, through the lens of a Pharisee? Or are you looking at them through the lens, through the eyes of Jesus? It's a great question to ask yourself. But now what I want to do is now I do want to look in John, specifically John chapter 4 with you. I, I mentioned the, the Samaritan woman earlier, and I want to look at that encounter and with a little further detail with you today. And once again, this is another example of Jesus hanging out with someone, hanging out with someone that society has deemed like you don't hang out with them. Not, not only a woman, but a, but a Samaritan woman. And according to society, Jewish people and Samaritans do not associate with one another. They, they did not hang out with one another. And this is a huge history lesson that we're not going to take a deep dive in, but this goes back hundreds of years before Jesus was even born. Like, Samaritans, Jewish people, they do not associate, they do not hang out with one another. And we see in this encounter, Jesus is breaking social taboos and traditions that society has held on tight for hundreds of years. Why did he do it? To create an opportunity to make himself known. To create an opportunity to make himself known. If Jesus would have followed the, the cultural norm and cut himself off from the, from the evil, horrible Samaritans, he would have missed a moment in his mission. He would have missed a moment. Speaking with the Samaritan woman created an opportunity to show that grace, truth, love, salvation, he talks about that living water, salvation, that they were available to everyone, Samaritans and Jewish people. Going back to our Matthew example, hanging out with sinners and tax collectors, it, it was not an endorsement of their sin. Jesus wasn't like, way to go, keep it up. That, that's not, what, it wasn't an endorsement of their sin, but what it was, was it created an opportunity to speak into their lives. Just like with the Samaritan woman here, breaking that cultural norm gave the opportunity to speak into her life and to the Samaritans as a whole. Because what you see is cutting off erases opportunity. It does. Cutting off erases opportunity. If Jesus would have followed the, the cultural norm, the society's standard, then we never get verses 39 through 42 in John chapter 4. We don't get it. 
if Jesus followed the rules of hanging out, we don't get these verses, plain and simple, 39 through 42. And that's what I want to look at here with you. Listen to what it has to say. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. Look, they're saying like Samaritans and Jewish people hang out, breaking the norm. And it goes on, he stayed for two days. He's hanging out with them for two days. And then it goes on to say in verse 41, because of this, many, uh, because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. We, now we have heard for ourselves. We know that this man, Jesus, really is the savior of the world. Look at the opportunity that was seized by Jesus, breaking the norm approaching the unapproachable by hanging out with people that you simply don't hang out with according to society. Look at what happened. Look at the opportunity that was seized. It really reminds me of some of my favorite verses in all of scripture. Colossians chapter four, verses five through six. It says, be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. May your conversations always be full of grace and seasoned with salt so that you will know how to answer everyone. So with that in mind, I want, I, want you to, I want you to answer these questions today. Go ahead and write some of these questions down. You don't have to give an immediate answer and I'm not gonna give my personal answer to these questions either. This is something that I want you to, to give some thought here. And... You can have differing opinions on these, but I just wanted to throw this out here for you. Just some, some thought-provoking questions. First one is this. Are believers in Christ today making the most of opportunities with people looking at Christianity from the outside looking in? Here's question number one. And a follow-up to that. Are believers in Christ today acting in wisdom towards people that are looking at Christianity from the outside looking in? Here's another one for you. Do believers speak gracefully with unbelievers today? Another one for you. Are there, are there people groups today that Christians treat like the Samaritans, the way the Jewish people and the Samaritans, they didn't associate with one another? Are there people groups today that Christians treat like the Samaritans today? And then here's, here's my last one for you and give it some thought. Do you think that Jesus would hang out with the Samaritans of today? Do you think that Jesus would hang out with the Samaritans of today? Here's some questions there for you. Throughout history, up until today, 2024, the world has and continues to create dividing lines among people in a number of different ways. I mean, just, just think of some of the different ways that people are divided today, whether it be borders, race, genders, political affiliations, you can go on and on and on. By the way, churches do the same thing. Like churches do the same thing with, with denominations, with uh, different uh, doctrine that they interpret different uh, versions of the Bible, right? That's a big one. Like, uh, dust thou knoweth that the King James Version is superior. I, I've heard that one personally. I had someone one time just walk through the doors here at the church when I was here, and he basically told me, if you're not preaching from the King James Version, that shame on, shame on me, that you're not teaching the, the true inspired version of the Bible. Seriously, just went out of his way to share with me that uh, it's King James only. But anyway, we have all these dividing lines, right? But we also, now more than ever, we have echo chambers as well. Uh, for an echo chamber, it's, a, and it's an environment where a person only encounters information and opinions that reflect his or her own. We see this a lot today. We have a lot of echo chambers in our society today. Our, our news in, in many ways has become an echo chamber. 
like our, our news feed on our, our devices. It, it's really tailor-made to fit your worldview. Even I remember signing up for the for my news app or whatever. It asked me what my preferences are and different topics and favorite teams. And, and everything is just tailor-made to fit my worldview. It just fits, it just speaks into this echo chamber. Because you can you can take any you can take any issue, you can find any issue in the news and find a different position on both sides. And whatever position you take on that particular news article, you'll just keep getting fed the one that agrees with your opinion or world worldview. It just kind of feeds the echo chamber. Social media has now become an echo chamber in many different ways, right? All the friends and followers that we have, and as soon as we don't agree with something that someone or some group says, oh, unfriend, unfollow, right? I try to... I try to challenge myself with with friends and people that I follow on social media. I, I try to challenge myself. It's not just people that I just agree with all the all the time. Like it's sometimes I I have friends or followers on social media that I'm like I'm not sure if I agree with their perspective or their point of view, and so I I try not to. Uh, I try to just kind of say I wonder what where they're coming from. It's not just my echo chamber. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still give people the boot every once in a while. I was still I still unfollow and unfriend from time to time, but I still like to challenge myself and and try to not just maintain this bubble or echo chamber, right? The radical simple approach of Jesus towards hanging out, it tears down those cultural standards of hanging out and it tears down in many ways the echo chamber as well. When Jesus was in Matthew's house, there was no echo chamber there, was there? That Jesus wants to sit down with sinners and tax collectors. He wants to have conversation with people that break social norms. And then we see the Pharisees, the the religious leaders. They, they They wanted their echo chamber. They wanted to maintain it. That's why they asked the disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Why is he hanging out with them? I love how in, in a lot of instances, like they don't ask Jesus directly. They always go to the disciples. Like, well, why does your teacher do this? Why does your teacher do that? Were they intimidated? Who knows? But if, if all we are doing is staying in our bubble, staying in our echo chamber, then in a way, we're essentially building hospitals for the healthy, aren't we? That's what we're doing. We're building hospitals for the healthy, just anyone who just shares our worldview. And and in a way, we're saying, look, to hell with anybody who doesn't have my worldview, to to hell with the sinners and the tax collectors. That's kind of what we're saying, right? When we stay in our bubble, when we stay in our echo chamber. Jesus does not want anyone to perish, but he wants everyone and then the last time I checked, everyone still means everyone. He wants everyone to come to repentance. It tells us that in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Jesus will break cultural standards and practices. He will not concern himself with about his reputation because of his radical compassion, mercy, forgiveness, and love. He wants everyone everyone to experience salvation. He does not want anyone to perish. That's why he hangs out with people in a radically simple way. And may we see the world. May we see God's creation, his image bearers, even them, whatever that them might be, right? May we look at them. May we look at God's creation, God's image bears in such a way of wanting everyone to, to come to the, the knowledge, the truth, the love, the salvation found in Christ and not wanting anyone to perish. Amen? Amen. Would you join me as we close together in prayer? Father, once again, we thank you for this time. And one of the biggest challenges that we face is looking at the world, looking at your people, looking at your creation through your eyes. And I pray, Lord, for each of us that we would ask those tough questions. Are we looking at the world through the eyes of a Pharisee or are we looking at the world through your eyes, Father? 
And I pray that we would once again look at you, look at your radically simple way of hanging out with people and and the profound effect that it had. That we would not concern ourselves with reputation or how we are seen, but we look at those around us with compassion, with love, with mercy, with grace. And we would just not concern ourselves with such a small thing like reputation, Father. But maybe truly have the compassion that you have for others. Uh, We thank you once again for this time. Uh, May we apply what we heard to our hearts and lives. We thank you so much for all that you are and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you so much for joining us here at Friendship Alliance. Uh, If you think someone else uh, could benefit from hearing this message today, we encourage you, please like, share, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, You can find us on Facebook and Instagram as well. Uh, But we're about sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And every like, every share, every subscribe to the uh, the YouTube channel helps us to be, uh, helps us to show that love and the good news. And uh, I'm not concerned about drawing attention to me or anything like that. It's all about pointing people to Jesus. So please like, share, subscribe, help the good news go forward. Uh, Also, what we always like to say is uh, we encourage you to watch this with other people. Ask each other questions. Uh challenge each other, and uh, it, it's a great way to, uh, to build your faith together by not, not just consuming uh, a message online, but to actually watch it, to share it, and uh, experience it with others. So I want to make mention of that as well. Uh, all the ways that you can connect with us found in the video description, all the songs that we're going to do at our in-person service, you'll also find in the video description. I uh, hope you have an awesome, blessed week, and uh, we'll see you back here next week. May God bless you.